Good. Just fine. How, uh, how familiar are you guys with programming? Um, like, what languages have you coded in, I guess? Or, um, um, like, uh, do you know for loops and that sort of thing? Somewhat, yeah. Okay, well. We might get into a little bit that sort of thing, um, depending on how much progress we make. Um, we're going to cover some of the very, just the sort of speed through a little bit of Tinkercad stuff, uh, mostly stuff we've already covered, but a little bit of review and a little bit of new stuff sprinkled in just to make sure that we've got everything. Some more history, I guess. Um, yeah, we'll get started. Just a minute. Do you guys remember what CAD stands for? I know, throw, it, throw the, all the CAD programs out there, Tinkercad, OpenSCAD, AutoCAD, CAD Adore Dragon. <laughs> That's a good one, Kevin. All right, well, it, it technically stands for Computer aided design. So, actually, Tinkercad is a computer aided design um, program in your browser meant to tinker with. Whereas OpenSCAD and AutoCAD, they're more uh, math and logic based tools used for um, my professionals for uh, mechanical design and that sort of thing, as opposed to animation. We'll go over some of this stuff later. Um, hey, Kayla. Um, some of this will be new to you. Um, we covered a bit of Tinkercad last time, so I'm going to send you the link and um, if you can, uh, if you want to follow along and start learning uh, and using Tinkercad, um, then go ahead. You don't actually have to install it. You just uh, have to create account, an account. Um, just use your Google uh, Gmail password or whatever email you want to use and um, I believe it asks you for your birthday. Um, that's about it. Um, let's see. Um, if you like, and if it doesn't seem to be slowing your computer down, yep, you'll just have to create a username, um, a password, and an email. Oh, put in your email, yeah, username and password. Just remember the username and password, of course. Um, yeah, well, and don't worry if you fall behind, because I'm going to cover it pretty quickly, but just kind of try to get an idea of what you can do. Um, and if you have questions at any time, um, just, you know, go ahead, you go ahead and ask. Um, but um, uh, yeah, just interrupt me at any time, um, because... Uh, this is the only time you have to ask me questions. Um, but otherwise, um, 
Yeah, I'm just trying to pull up these tab real quick so I can show you stuff if I need to. But um, yeah, uh, please ask questions at any time. But we'll go ahead and get started on um, on Tinkercad. So let's see, make sure I'm showing you. Here we go. All right. as big as possible. There we go. Okay, so um, 3D printing is a pretty new technology. Um, let's make this even bigger. There we go. Uh, 3D printing is a pretty new technology. Um, oh, one sec. Okay, there we go. Um, but it can be made to uh, use to make some really intricate designs. Um, some, uh, you know, in this example, um, someone uh, probably didn't actually design this in exactly um, like on the computer, but maybe took a picture of it um, or scanned it and used some imaging to convert that to a design to get the, the shape that you see there. Um, not that someone couldn't design it, but um, it looks more accurate than you might expect and, and broken in places that, um, you know, you wouldn't necessarily break if you were designing it that way. Um, but this is the guy who invented 3D printing. Um, he, let's see, uh, yeah, that's him sitting in his uh, workshop. Um, so what is it? Um, how does it work? Examples, yeah, that's what we'll go over. Okay, so um, 3D printing is based off of the idea of additive manufacturing. Um, nope, uh, Gabe, we didn't do OpenSCAD yet. Uh, we're going to. I'm going to show you that. Um, so um, 3D printing is uh, a relatively new technology. Um, it, the, the concept has existed for a while, but we haven't had the um, ability to and machine tools to make uh, these products until relatively recently. Um, and do you, does anyone know, um, based on my hint here that I've just highlighted for you, uh, what uh, traditional manufacturing um, tools are um, are called uh, as a big group compared to additive manufacturing. Um, these are things like drills, saws, um, augers, any of the tools, uh, laser tools, um, all of the machine tools you might expect to find at a machine shop um, where uh, you have pieces made. Um, even, um, yeah, Drills and saws make up most of these things. Um, does anyone have a guess of, of what that's called? Nobody? Nobody has it, can guess, even with this hint here? Additive manufacturing? What's the opposite of additive manufacturing? Keyword additive. Subtractive. So it's uh, subtractive manu manufacturing is when you take a block of something and you take remove you remove pieces of it. Um, so uh, for example, maybe you start with a piece of wood and you uh, but you want to end up with a sculpture of a guy's face in the wood or some some famous person, usually a um, like an emperor or uh, queen of the land or something like that. Um, and anyone who, now anyone who can pay for it, um, they would take their tools and scrape away at a piece of wood to carve out a model of their, um, you know, of their sculpture. Um, same goes with, um, you know, just general, you know, when you 
if you want to make a puzzle piece, you take a big piece of wood and you take a jigsaw and you the jigsaw is the tool that cuts out um, in intricate shapes. So that's why they call it a jigsaw puzzle because that's what they originally used to make um, the tool they used to make the puzzle pieces. Um, but in additive manufacturing, the process is different. Um, in additive manufacturing, uh, you you never have extra material. Um, you only print the material that is actually a part of the final design. So you don't have you know the the scrapings of wood that shave off as you uh, create your face in the mold. Or, I mean, in your in the image that you're trying to make. Um, you just layer by layer add um, add the shape. So um, you, the way this works is it's designed in 3D modeling software, which um, you uh, have and will have some more opportunities to uh, use. Um, you send it a copy of it to the uh, to the machine, and that machine uh, takes uh, converts it into specific instructions, and the design is assembled layer by layer. So it splits your design up into um, say if it's you know, putting one layer per millimeter and you have 10 millimeters, your design is 10 millimeters tall, then it'll uh, put 10 layers, um, take 10 layers for your design to be finished. Um, so it's, we talked about this, it's distinct because it uses additive process rather than um, taking or removing uh, pieces and layers. Um, and the main difference in the types of 3D printing come down to how the layers are assembled. Um, so these are some shapes and things that have been made. Um, this is a prosthetic right here. Um, this is um, just an intricate face carved into a, or I mean built uh, layer by layer onto a block of wood. Um, and a, an electric guitar. Um, the printed piece is just the, what you see in blue here, not the whole guitar. That was uh, added, those pieces were added later. Um, and this whole thing, um, which you can imagine would be incredibly difficult to uh, actually make something like this where it doesn't break. If you're trying to remove little teeny pieces of this from the inside, um, that's going to take an incredible amount of time and patience for for one person to to carve out this you know something of this nature and this like weird spiky snowball. But um, in additive manufacturing, you can print anything. Um, if it's connected, then it'll stay connected once you know once you build it, as long as it's structurally sound and it can support its own weight. So um, you can create things that you, um, people, and people can create things that they've never been able to create before. Um, you can imagine um, just a piece of, uh, say, a, a cylinder. You have a solid cylinder, um, and it, with a drill, you could drill all a hole straight through the cylinder. Um, that's pretty reasonable with subtractive manufacturing. But now with this 3D printing process, if we layer by layer, um, put this, you know, put, we try to recreate this hole, we could, you know, easily replicate building up this cylinder to the same specs, but if we wanted to, we could move that hole just a little bit by little bit each time, and so we could actually have that hole spiral up through the cylinder if we, if we liked. Um, there's no drill that will just, will drill in a spiral and not carve out that entire section rather than, um, you know, leaving a spiral hole uh, maybe that you could screw a spring into or that you could, um, you know, fit some complex object in. So, so really the, it's expanding the tool set. Now 3D printing is expanding our tools that we can use and, um, like, the, you know, the possibilities are now pretty much endless. If you can imagine it, you can design it. Um, and right now we're only limited by the materials um, that 
we can use, which, um, you know, as far as the cheap materials go, the ones that um, we can have, you know, we, we have the ability to easily print um, that goes, that's plastic. Um, you know, if we went to school to, at some place like MIT where they have a, you know, where they're doing work on uh, 3D printing with metals, then we might be able to do some, uh, you know, make metal, aluminum sculptures, something like this prosthetic here, which could be aluminum, I'm not sure. Um, it's probably plastic too. Um, but that's an example of the kinds of things that you can make. Um, so Chuck Hole, he's the guy that in that picture I showed, he created um, created 3D printing. Um, he created uh, the, using the process called stereolithography, which um, is, uh, you know, according to Wikipedia, um, it's uh, abbreviated SLA, which you'll see uh, relatively frequently with uh, 3D printing. And it's just a particular process with a particular type of uh, plastic that uses a certain resin that sets. And so he was the first one to discover the right material with a photoreactive, like it has a UV laser that actually sets the plastic to harden. Um, so this original 3D printer printed a layer and then shone a UV laser on it, um, just UV light. Uh, you could potentially use the sun. Um, I don't know how long that would take. He's probably using a pretty strong laser. Um, and then uh, that cures, that first layer cures, then you print another layer on top of that, and you shine a laser on it, and that layer cures. So one by one, you build the layers. Um, and uh, stereolithography, STL, um, is the file format that he used to convert it into um, the 3D the machine that prints it, that, that's, what the, that's the file format that the machine reads. Um, that, that file format tells you to go, um, you know, tells the machine head, okay, move one millimeter to the left, move 10 millimeters uh, forward, move one millimeter to the left, move 10 millimeters back, and, you know, by, it can, that's the type of instructions that are included in this STL file, file format. It's every single instruction that the machine head has to um, the printer head has to follow. Um, that's how that's how detailed this has to be. Um, so, three with three D printers, devices keep getting smaller, faster, and cheaper. And now we have open source printing. Um, uh, in fact, uh, some very creative person created RepRap, um, which is the first self replicating manufacturing machine, which means that it can print a fully working version of itself. Now, first, it has to actually assemble. Uh, it, I mean, after it prints the, uh, the pieces, it has to actually assemble it, which it can't do as far as I'm aware. Um, but if you add on a couple of, um, you know, if someone just needs to build one, um, you know, builder bot, I guess, uh, to put the pieces together if they haven't already done so, and then... Um, that rep wrap would just have to build, uh, you know, if, it, if that if part of rep wrap is the builder bot, then it can print itself and then build itself while it's printing another version of itself. And in theory, um, it can self-replicate, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's open source, so the designs are free. Um, you can even check it out yourself if you like. Just Google rep wrap. Um, MakerBot, um, the, the Maker community, um, has done a lot with 3D printing. Um, so they have a MakerBot replicator, um, and they provide uh, completed 3D printers. Often you can search for, um, for Maker 3D printers in your area. Um, they created Thingiverse, which is this uh, website that's devoted to um, designs that people have made. Um, that you can, you're free to download and print on your own, as many of you as you like. So, you, for example, this is, they feature a trumpet, um, this uh, necklace printed. Um, they, a shark busting out of the desk, and um, some horses. Uh, you can scroll and see 
all kinds of things. You can find uh, adorable robots, cat patterns, cosplay, Serial City. Um, looks like they're turning cereal boxes and adding things onto them. So you, you can really find anything, um, anything you want here. Uh, you just have to search for it. Um, you'll actually find that there, there's a lot more things here um, than on Tinkercad, which you know only has things built in Tinkercad. This has things built from anywhere. Um, so if I search uh, Batman, um, I'm going to get, you know, here's a, a Lego Batman. Here's a, a Batman face, a cookie cutter Batman. So, you know, this cookie cutter, you can actually use, you know, that's, that's the idea behind these things is that, you know, if in the future, rather than go and buy your own cookie cutter in whatever shape you want, you could have one 3D printer and a supply of plastic pellets that you pour in, um, you know, whatever color plastic pellets you like. Um, I still have to ask Mr. Dubik if he can print in different colors or not. Um, but, so like this Batman cookie cutter, if you wanted, if you had a 3D printer or you knew someone with a 3D printer, you could send them, email this, them this design, and they'll feed it into their machine and print off a Batman cookie cutter. And depending on how long it takes, um, if, you know, maybe it takes five minutes or 30 minutes or an hour, um, depending on how fast and advanced their machine is, um, then you let it set and you can make Batman-shaped cookies, Bat-signal-shaped cookies. Um, but really, the, you, you know, just by looking at these designs here, you can see how much more intricate they get. Um, if we do a search, we looked at chess uh, in Tinkercad. We look here, you know, we can see really cool pieces, um, including the, the chess piece plus, you know, uh, like jigsaw pieces that fit together, um, all kinds of things. Um, you know, some, you know, I remember, I recognize this one from Tinkercad, this blue and, or this colorful one with reds and everything. Um, but there's, there's a lot more intricate stuff, so it's worth checking out. Um, so we've already gotten started with Tinkercad, um, but we'll uh, review the basics. Um, sign up. Yep. Let's see. Uh, so to move objects, you click um, and drag, or if you've clicked on an object, you can use the keyboard arrows. Um, and once you've clicked on an object, you'll see the dimensions, which you can also click on and edit manually, uh, typing in the, where the numbers are um, to you know, set them more specifically. Um, you can also set the objects to snap to the grid, um, or if you zoom in small enough, um, you can make a very small object if you uh, are very, you know, you make the grid each square pretty big. Um, so that, that can help you maintain some accuracy because when you're, when you're zoomed way out and you're looking at the full uh, layout, it's, uh, it can be difficult to get things as precise as when you have a much smaller resolution and things snap a lot further apart. Um, so this button up here, in the top uh, left corner, helps you navigate. Um, you can experiment around with that. To make holes, you put uh, shapes, uh, whatever shape you want, into um, a solid shape, um, and you actually put the solid shape into the other solid shape, and then you click the uh, up in the inspector here, the gray grayed out area to make it a hole. Um, then. Be sure to um, click, uh, highlight both of them by uh, shift clicking, like you hold down shift and click on one and then the other, or highlight the whole thing, highlight them together, and then uh, don't forget to uh, group them. If you don't group them, then the the change is never set, and they actually, the, the program actually thinks it's two different objects. Um, so that's important to group them once you're done. Uh, to manipulate, uh, pretty much just play around with it, but um, this uh, little triangle, uh, it's a black triangle, it looks more like a cone, um, that will move it 
in a third direction, which you can't move it um, in by just clicking and dragging. Um, just experiment to figure out which direction that will move. Uh, these little rotate buttons will rotate along one, two, three dimensions, um, or two dimensions each. So you're always constrained to moving in the two direct dimensions, but if you just move in one direction once and then you move the other direct dimension the other way, um, you can get it to shape whatever you want. And the little dots help, um, you know, help you resize things um, also in two dimensions. So you're always working in three dimensions because it's you're working on a in in a all of your operations work on either one or two dimensions because if you were to operate you know to move your mouse which is moving in two dimensions and it's expecting a th you know it's trying to make a three dimensional change like it doesn't know uh, if you want to move like which which two dimensions or you know which three dimensions you want to move in or what combination because if you drag up but and you want it to go up, but you um, maybe next time you drag back, but that's that motion is still in the same, you know, still up. It doesn't know what you're talking about, so uh, that's why everything's always constrained to two dimensions. Um, we talked about all of this. Um, yep, and uh, if you want to be more precise, it's always helpful to um, actually set the values rather than uh, leaving the values. If you just want to play around, which is kind of what Tinkercad's for, then you just play around. Um, so, just finishing up a bit of more things, a few more things. The ruler is super useful um, for setting things relative to each other. Um, if you want to do some basic math, use the ruler. If you want to do really complex objects, we're about to get into another tool that will really help you out. Um, but just for the basics, uh, I mean, for basic math and, you know, typing in you know, scales, uh, use the ruler. Uh, and you can use a work plane to change, uh, temporarily change what work plane you're working on. So if I were to click on the work plane and then click on B, then I would now have this, um, the dimension, or the, the plane that I would be working in. I could move objects right next to B and they'd slide this way and this way. Um, and if I wanted to move them into B, I'd have to use that special cone. So the, the work plan can be really helpful. Um, again, don't forget to group them once you make a block, like something like this. Um, a really useful tool is if you have a bunch of different objects and you want them all to be aligned in the same axis, um, highlight them all, and then um, see this red line right here? Uh, you click. You can hover over each of these dots and see what that alignment does. But in this case, hovering over this uh, red dot uh, will snap them all to the bottom. Uh, or, you know, so they'll all line up where each of their bottoms, uh, the bottom of each letter is on uh, the line. So that can also be really helpful in aligning things, which uh, when you're just dragging and dropping, it's a little more difficult. Um, you can also flip them by... Just clicking on the mirror, um, and you, or you click on the object and click on mirror, or maybe the other way around. Um, but then you'll have different options similar to this aligned, where um, you have little dots, and if you hover over the dots, then um, uh, sorry, not dots, arrows. Um, so, like in this example, if you hover over this red arrow, um, everything flips. Um, if you Hover over this one, things flip, you know, in different directions. So play around with that too. Um, and the tutorials are really helpful. Um, finish them at your own pace. Um, you know, at any time in the future, if you really struggle with something, I can always pull up Tinkercad and help guide you through it. Um, there's a lot of tutorials, um, but uh, yeah. So and. Uh, I mentioned last time that uh, Mr. Dubik has a working 3D printer, and if you create a design um, in Tinkercad, and I believe also uh, OpenSCAD, which is the tool I'm about to teach you, um, if you use, um, if you create something in either of these programs, um, and you want it printed, then um, which why would you?
do not want something printed, um, you should definitely come up with something at least, even if you just get something from um, from Thingiverse uh, and maybe put your initials on the bottom or something to just a little little something at the, the at the minimum, um, you know, just uh, or be creative um, and do whatever you want. But um, yeah, so Mr. Dubik has a 3D printer that. If you send them um, a file, then, uh, oh, and actually to do that, um, I believe there's an export button, uh, but I will have to, I'll help find that with you right now so I can make sure that you, oops, I'm going to have to sign in. One sec. Are there any questions so far? Yep, Gabe, I know you ha know how to use it, but I'm just going to show the rest to make sure that you know how to uh, save a copy. So we'll go ahead and open up my awesome design number one. And go in here and click Design, uh, Download for 3D Printing. Um, you And you want to... Pretty sure get the STL, but I'll have to double check that with Mr. Dubik because he didn't tell me which one. Um, let me write that down. Um, but I would expect STL probably. Um, and just be sure and save your file. So if you if he needs a different one, you can always just download a different one. Um, You'll notice also, if you think, uh, if you want to upload it to Thingiverse, you can just upload it right away. Um, it looks like you can even order a 3D print off of Tinkercad, though I expect you probably have to pay for it. Um, yeah, you have to use one of these uh, four sites that will ship you, or will ship you your design um, immediately. So that's pretty cool. Um, yep, so... Let's get started with, uh, with the new tool, um, OpenSCAD. Okay, so um, let's see, Kayla. I'm not sure if you heard uh, but uh, or saw that there's another link here above the Tinkercad link in the chat bar um, where uh, you can go to download OpenSCAD. Um, I think uh, we haven't gone over this, so I'm going to cover this definitely more slowly. Um, but go ahead and download that. That's free. You don't have to enter any information. Just download it. Um, just pay attention that uh, if you have a Mac, uh, that link might not take you to immediately to the right file. But just look right below. Let's see. Uh, you should see it'll load up this page um, here where it says download OpenSCAD. If you have a Mac, go to OS. Uh, other OSs and versions, and then you can find uh, the Mac software, too. Um, but it's a pretty straightforward download. Um, all right. So in OpenSCAD, um, this is... Uh, I'll go ahead and point out, uh, 
CAD is used in many industries, including dentistry, architecture, mechanical drafting, and animation. Um, with CAD so far, um, we've used Tinkercad. Um, it's um, you know pretty rough. Uh, you know you can throw stuff together, but it's a prototyping tool, um, and also more of a design. And you know you know you have to do a lot more of the work yourself. Um, we'll see with OpenSCAD. Um, this focuses on the the what they call the CAD aspects of modeling as opposed to the artistic aspects. Um, so what, whereas Tinkercad was more artistic, you got you drag and drop, and you know there's a little bit of numbers and you know manipulation. OpenSCAD um, is is this right here, um, precise machining for um, you know for engines and for um, airplanes and um, you know anything that needs to be precise. Um, you know, from the the basics are you know lining four holes um, evenly spaced in a piece of wood. You could do that with Tinkercad, but in OpenSCAD, um, it's a math problem and it's way simpler to do it very precisely in OpenSCAD. Um, what's OpenSCAD not? It's not an animation designer. Um, graphic designers have their own uh, CAD tools for uh, designing. Uh, Monsters Inc. type uh, cartoons uh, or animations. Um, they're they're much more graphical. You can click on their faces to give in drag to give them expressions, and you actually they even link different components so that when you drag, um, it you know smiles are more natural. And people have created the the backbone to you know, you know what is a head and how does a head behave. Um, how do eyes work? That sort of thing. So animators can can just click and drag on those things, and they do exactly what you expect. Um, whereas uh, you know, but there's not much math involved. It's more, does it look right? Um, no one cares if it's precise because it's a movie. Um, they only care if it if it looks good. Um, you know, you don't want your engine to look good. You you want your engine to run as efficiently as possible. So. Um, or you know any other tools that are a lot easier than an engine. Um, an engine is just like a really complicated example that you would have to use something um, like OpenSCAD or even um, you know you could design an engine on OpenSCAD, but you'd probably use a tool um, more like AutoCAD, which actually um, are you know the AutoCAD is made by the same company as Tinkercad, um, but you know they're tool two CAD tools for different purposes. Um, AutoCAD is uh, is what a lot of uh, mechanical engineers use, um, but OpenSCAD is pretty similar. Um, it's just an open source free version of AutoCAD, which is very expensive software. Um, so basically, you know, I know I'm repeating myself a little bit here, but instead of drawing and manipulating with mouse, um, we're going to uh, write scripts, uh, programming uh, scripts that uh, you compile and they render into 3D shapes. Um, we can make complex things uh, using, you know, uh, people have already written programs into OpenSCAD, so, um, you know, rather than defining what is a circle, uh, we can just type um, things like circle. Uh, so let's, let's get into some details. Um, so, uh, kind of like, you know, one of the similarities is it's you know there's still um, you know you can you can still create the complex shapes in this and pretty much in the same way you think of it as okay what you know what do I want to what shape do I want whole and then what shape do I want to subtract out to to leave a hole um, you know I shouldn't I shouldn't have used hole what shape do I want solid um, for example in this picture up here. Um, you, know, you would make a solid uh, sphere, and then you'd make a hollow prism that uh, subtracts out the uh, the cylinder. Sorry, the cylinder, the hollow cylinder that subtracts out from the sphere. Um, so, 
uh, you know, an alternative would be the intersection of these two, um, and then you'd be left with um, a cylinder with slightly rounded edges. Um, or, but basically, it lets you create very complex shapes quickly. Um, and there's even more programming uh, tools, such as uh, for loops, uh, conditional statements that let you say if this, then that, um, and other math expressions. Um, so it's very math intensive. Um, don't let that scare you, though, because you know you don't need to know that much math. It's just it. If the more math you know, the more tools you can use. And although there's a lot of math I, I don't know, but you know I can just type in stuff and play around with it, and it's pretty cool. Um, you know, you just see what's made up. You know what it makes. Um, yeah. So. This is, these are some examples of things that people have made um, that you know, are based off of mathematical models. Um, more examples. Uh, even more examples. Um, someone looks like they lost their button from their remote, and so they designed their own to fill the place on this uh, wingman. Um, and here's some gears. A heart bracelet. Actually, that heart bracelet is pretty intricate because you can see in the middle um, there's two solid layer, uh, two solid uh, cylinders, but it's connected by a mesh inside um, that gives it a lot of strength, but keeps it lighter because it's not solid. Um, so that's pretty interesting. Uh, we covered what OpenSCAD is. Uh, it's built in Linux. Uh, maybe not. Take that, I take that back. You can use it in any operating system. Um, we already downloaded it. Um, this is how to download it. Um, if you have problems, just ask me. Um, I'll help you out. Um, please interrupt me at any time. I know I keep saying it, but um, none of you have ever interrupted me to ask me a question, or at least not very often, so I'm just going to keep telling, asking you to keep on interrupting. Um, <laughs> hi, Gabe. Uh, I'm going to ask you to keep on interrupting until um, you're comfortable with it. Um, I'm good. Um, all right, so uh, in our last that's 15 minutes, let's get to designing some things. Um, so this is pretty basic. Um, click, uh, you know, all you have to do is type circle, open parentheses, r equals 40, close parentheses, semicolon. Um, it's important to end every line in a semicolon that's, that's the end of your line. Otherwise, um, it won't like it, and it will probably give you an error rather than show anything. When you want to run it, um, Click Design, Compile, and that'll tell you if you have any errors. Um, uh, programming logic error, or programming errors. Uh, click Design, Compile, and Render, or those are F5 and F6. If you want to um, compile and render, we'll also show you what it looks like. Um, yep. So that's pretty basic. Um, this is what you get. Also tell me if... Um, I'm going too fast or too slow because I can't see your screen, so I don't know um, if you're able to keep up or not. Um, good. Gabe says he's able to keep up. Uh, Kayla and Kevin, have you gotten this uh, installed, and are you following along as well? Kevin's good. Gabe says it's super snowy. Uh, okay, Kayla, um, that's not a problem at all. Um, you just, uh, yep, just follow follow along and see what you can do. Um, that's 
Uh, yeah, let's. Gabe, I hope uh, I don't lose you. I will. I promise. I haven't forgotten. I'm going to load these YouTube videos. And uh, Kayla also. Um, there are. I'll be loading two. Um, uh, two videos on relativity, and then um, also the video from last time. If you'd like to see um, me act, uh, last time I actually um, used uh, Tinkercad and uh, really did a lot more. Um, you know, showed you you know right in in the screen you know how to do all of these things. So if you if you want to look at at it up uh, at that, you can. Look at that too. Um, I, I'm going to email all of you once I've done that. I really, you know, I figured out how to, how to do it. I just need to get the right password um, to put it in the right spot. Um, so hopefully, fingers crossed, by tomorrow. Um, so how does this how does this work? Um, all of these, you know, these commands are broken down into uh, functions and parameters and some control statements, which we'll get to in a sec. So um, a statement is made up of uh, you know, functions, and functions have parameters that they take that help define um, you know, what the function does. So in the case of a circle, um, you can use a radius or a diameter. If you want to use the diameter, you have to say d equals and then the diameter number. Um, if you, um, this, this bar tells you um, that bar means or. So you, you don't need both, you just need the radius or the diameter. Either is enough to specify you know, the full circle. Um, so uh, it looks like actually you can say r equals 40 also. So um, the argument, uh, these uh, parameters are also known as arguments. Um, so as far as viewing these things go, um, turning on the axes can be really, really helpful to see where in space these are placed. If you don't turn on your axes, um, you're going to have to do a lot of guessing and checking. So it's worth doing um, now if you have it open. And if you don't remember this, um, so you, uh, click View, Show Axes. Um, and uh, the scroll wheel helps you zoom. Um, it looks like in a Mac, uh, using right click, um, you can pan, which means uh, you know, move it around in 3D space. Um, yep, and also if you click it, you can manually orbit um, in in the view. Okay, so uh, I'll let you spend a few minutes exploring your viewpoint later. Because um, let's get on to some cooler shapes, um, more shapes. Uh, so, what do we need to define a square? Um, so we need uh, size. That's it. Um, you can set the center, um, and if you set the center to be true, then um, oh, what does it say down here? True means the center of the screen. False means one corner is in uh, the center of the screen. So. Uh, if you, if you have your axes on, um, uh, Gabe, are you talking about the uh, video on relativity and that sort of thing? Slideshow? What slideshow? This one. Oh, yeah. Um, yep, I can do that. I'll send the I'll send these out to all of you. Um, yep. So uh, yeah, it's it's good to know what you can do, but um, uh, you can also go to openscad.org um, and click on the documentation. And this is a really really great tool. Um, that you know the first thing in the documentation is the big cheat sheet um, of mathematical functions that you can use um, to help you out, uh, transformations that will help you move things around, um, the syntax so that if you can, you can troubleshoot your problems, uh, 2D objects, 3D objects, um, special modifier characters, which we'll 
get into a little bit later. Um, there's some special variables, which we probably won't touch on, um, and then some other operations that we'll, we'll get to later. Um, basically, all the things for reference are here, and then if you want to, um, they have tutorials, uh, which can help you create you know, the picture, um, all these pictures that they're showing. Um, and then there's also the user manual, which if you go off um, at the back of the top of the page under documentation, um, you click the user manual and, uh, oh, it looks, like, it looks like this is the user manual. So you click things like first steps, um, which will open up and show you how to do different things. Um, you can go through the user manual um, to you know, really get a detailed, um, you know, really learn all of the features. Um, one important one I'll point out is STL import and export. Remember, we learned STL um, is the, the file type that the, the 3D printer uses to print. So you have to, once you have your design, you have to export to the STL file format. Um, and uh, so you, uh, you can use this. Um, you know, sometimes it's confusing the way they're specifying things like parameters with these funky uh, brackets and that sort of thing. But um, just go to the usage examples and go straight there and then modify, you know, you know use common sense to try to figure out, you know, you know, so this says import D colon slash last documents and settings. So obviously this is where it's saving on your computer. So you probably, you might use C. I do, I know Windows defaults to C. Um, and I could rename it to uh, whatever piece .stl, um, that sort of thing. Um, so that's how you use the documentation. It can be really helpful in troubleshooting. Um, since we only have about five minutes left, I'm just going to try to show you some cool things you can do um, and not expect you to follow along because I'm going to go through this really quickly. Um, so uh, I've touched on this before. Uh, what's the error? What's what's problem? What's the problem with running this command right here? Square open bracket size equals forty. Center equals true. Close bracket. Um, it says error. Compilation failed. Parser error in line four. Syntax error. So we know we did something wrong um, with the syntax. Gabe says missing. There's no semicolon. Kevin says two. Okay, that's right. Um, the problem is you have to end the commands with a semicolon. So um, you add that, um, and we're, we're back to good. Um, now, what if we don't want this circle in the center? Well, it defaults to in the center. So um, anything we want to not be in the center, we have to move around um, specifically. Um, so we have an x, a y, and a z axis. Um, and you should be able to see that in a little corner, which direction is which. So that will help you out if you have your axes showing. Um, another good reason to have your axes uh, on. And then uh, you can use translate. Um, it goes, the first argument is x, then y, and then z. Um, and in particular, don't forget to leave out the square brackets inside the uh, round brackets. Um, transformations refer to uh, translating, or rotating, or scaling, or mirroring, uh, which is like a reflection um, of the shapes along a certain axis. So you're always going to have to specify which axis you want to translate around. Um, in this case, you know, you're just moving something in, you know, moving something exactly as it is in 3D space. So this, how much you can, you can be negative 20, positive 20, um, you know, on the X, Y, or Z, and that'll be in all three directions that you can choose. Um, and uh, it's important to note that you can apply multiple translations to a single shape. So, um, if we applied, you know, this, if these are our coordinates, we can move this, uh, this cube over here. But um, if we want, well, I'll show you multiple operations of the same thing in just a sec. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is an example of moving the last argument is Z, and Z is typically reserved for up and down. Um, so, uh, you know, 20 up means the circle's up here, 20 down, the negative 20 means the circle's down. 
um, to the, for the same object. Um, if you want two shapes, well, you just add two lines. Um, in this case, uh, there one's uh, 30, uh, move, moved 30 in the x direction, and the other moved negative 30 in the x direction. So they're equidistant um, from the center. Um, now here uh, is the rotate function. Um, this is uh, tells how much you want to rotate it in the you know along the x axis. So if you notice here, um, this can be a little confusing. This 45 means rotate 45 degrees, um, but you know imagine that you have that x axis is um, you're you're kind of like the x axis has handles and you just spin the x axis. Um, what would happen to the object? So you can see that this, this is the x-axis here, um, if you see my mouse moving here. Um, and then when you spin it, you know, it was flat, and now it's this way. So you rotated it along this x-axis. Um, if you just want to rotate something and you have trouble remembering, just keep trying it out until you get it right, and eventually you'll get the hang of it. Um, you can rotate it in multiple axes by just putting in multiple parameters. Um, but, uh, you know, for example, and actually, you know, see here, normally the squares were, um, for reference, normally the squares, I'll put axes on. So the axes are on the edges of, you know, in the middle of each edge um, originally. But now the axes, if you rotate it along the z direction, now the axes are in the corners. So um, you know, if you wanted to make quickly a six, I mean an eight-sided star, you could put one square with a rotated 45 degrees um, on top of another square not rotated 45 degrees, and you'd have um, six, an eight-pointed star. Um, to mirror something, um, you flip it over that axis. Again, just practice with it um, until you get the hang of it. It's kind of hard to visualize sometimes which axis you want to flip over. Um, but you just need to put a 1 in each axis because there's no amount of mirroring you can do. It's just flip entirely in one axis to the other. Um, so if you flip over the x-axis, and this is the x-axis here, I know that's confusing because the, the x-axis is in a different position for the moment. Um, if you want to flip it over the x-axis, you know, it ends up down over on this side. Um, that's how the mirror works. Um, scaling makes things bigger. Um, you can scale in x, y, or z direction. Um, if you want to make everything bigger, uh, or you want to make, keep the, the relationship between the dimensions the same, scale it by the same amount in each direction. So 2 times 2 times 2 or 2, 2, 2, you know, it'll double the X and the Y and the Z, and the, it'll look the same. It'll just double the size of the shape. Um, so uh, I showed you where the cheat sheet is um, in the documentation if you go to openscad.com. So um, there's some more things um, which we'll get to later. Um, there's a... Uh, but for now, um, I hope that... Kind of give you some gave you some ideas of what you can do. Um, I hinted, if you saw this, that you could do cool shapes with polygons if you just want to define each point. So um, if you, I won't, I'm not going to tell you how to do that, but if you want to figure it out, um, check out the documentation and check it out. Otherwise, um, in the meantime, um, play around with the transformations until you get um, kind of have a good feel for what they do and you know how they can be useful and don't forget that if you want to put another line, if you want to make another shape, just make another line, and don't forget to put the parentheses, uh, I mean the semicolon, right at the end. Um, all right. Uh, I hope that's it for today. Um, I'll talk to you, or we'll get back to this on Monday, and we'll see some more cool things uh, that you can do with OpenSCAD. Um, I'll hopefully by tomorrow be able to send you uh, those YouTube links for YouTube videos, um, and I know I 
didn't get to the Minecraft house builder, but I couldn't find that video. Um, can't remember which of you asked me about it, but um, I'm still looking for that. Um, and I'll make sure that SDL is the right uh, file format. But just keep playing around um, and make some cool things. Um, and have fun. I'll talk to you on Monday. Have a good night and weekend.